Please try to make a sketch of uh, the information that you are given. You sketch them somewhere. We have a brick. A brick looks like that, right? It's a brick uh, with a mass of 10 kg. I hope you guys at the back can see. It falls from the height of a building. Okay? This is my building. The height is how many meters? 15 meters. From that point to that point, this brick is falling. The brick hits a platform. I don't know if it's a balcony or whatever it is, but there is a platform where the brick hits. And this platform is how many meters? Which means, what is the distance moved up today? Uh, that's what you're using. Your potential energy that is lost is equal to your kinetic energy. That is gain. Okay, and that is what they are asking us. When the brick hits the platform, so that 15 was just to set you off track. What you're dealing with is 12 meters. So your EP that is lost is mass and gravity and the height. It's a vertical height. Your mass is 10 kg. Gravity, you have 12 plane, you get your kinetic energy, which is the potential energy. How much? 70? Joules. That is your kinetic energy. But the formula we have used is for potential energy. But we have said the potential energy lost is equal to the kinetic energy. You got it. Can I erase this part? This diagram. Or you can choose to take the long drive and say the velocity, initial velocity of the brick is zero. The object falls, which is a 9.8 acceleration due to gravity. It moves a displacement again of that 12 meters. So in either calculation, we still need the correct displacement 12 meters. That's our key there. Uh, your final velocity is unknown. Then you can solve for the final velocity, right? Which formula are you using? Five, two, okay, or G. Um, this remember, keep in mind is V square. You have zero square plus two times nine comma eight times twelve. Then you find the square root of whatever this is. Two times nine comma eight times twelve. Uh, this will give us our velocity meters per second. Then we calculate for the kinetic energy, half times the mass times the velocity square, or you don't even need to find the place because it will take us back to the v square, that's v square. Half times 10 times whatever v square this is. Okay. We still end up with 1176 joules. Okay, this is v square again. It's great. But this is a long drive. But even though it is a long drive, it makes our momentum easy. It makes us solving for the momentum easy because we already have the velocity. Then remember what I said about velocity? Mass times the velocity. 
But if you did this, you'll be forced to calculate for the velocity before you can get the momentum. Uh, let me do this, then I'll do that one. You guys have the question now. Momentum, mass times velocity, your mass is 10 kg, your velocity, this number here, you bring it in kgs, meters per second. That is how this one will, will play out because you have the velocity. But if you had this one, you'll be forced to calculate for the velocity. You make in the subject of the formula or you throw in everything. Okay, this is five. Over five, over five. V, whatever this square, whatever it gives you meters per second, then you use this, which is now the same number as this one. Okay, so whatever is here, that's what you use to solve for the momentum, mass times velocity, 10 times your velocity, this number goes there, you get should be the same number as that meters per second. Yeah. You guys are calculators. Okay. Let's try the other one.